Good morning. We're at the park. We're back for some more skills clinics, and today we're gonna talk about the basics, getting on and off the bike. Probably should have started with the basics, that's what the best always do, but why not do it for day number two of the week of clinics. You might have been racing cross for a couple years now, and you've been going out, and you've been racing, and feeling confident, and you, you're ready to go. You can roll into the first race, no practice. But, big, big but. It's really important that you do take the time to establish the muscle memory, work on the basics, and basically start from the bare bones on what makes cross cross, and work your way up. Right? Getting on and off the bike is what makes this discipline different from every other discipline of cycling. Now this is something that I do year after year in the few weeks prior to the, the season starting. I'm gonna go out to my local park. Here we're in Kinetic's backyard, the Arden Park. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start slow. We're gonna start at a walking pace and we're gonna practice on and off the bike a few hundred times. And I mean a few hundred times. And then we're gonna slowly ramp it up and we're gonna start practicing getting on and off the bike at a little bit more accelerated pace, a slight jog, maybe a little bit of a trot, so to say. Then we're gonna keep working through until we slowly work up to race pace. There's not a barrier in sight, there's nothing to stop us, but what we wanna do is we wanna slowly break down the process and start slow so that we build up the proper muscle memory to eliminate a curl hop if we have it, to make sure that we know that every little footstep is gonna fall into place, that we know the pedal is gonna be in the right spot, and if it's not in the right spot, how do we compensate for that? There's a lot of things that you can slowly ramp up and then once you get to the race season, it's just firing on all cylinders. You don't even have to think about it because you've practiced it thousands of times by the time that the race season comes. Now I always practice hopping as well. I hate running, but uh, it's something that you still wanna practice because you're gonna have to get off. It's good that when, frankly, the fan, you know what to do. Now, some do's and don'ts with dismounting. But these are things that I would advise against and that we should really focus on working towards a better, smoother routine. So number one, we don't want to do the step through technique where we step through the bike as we begin to dismount with our right leg. So when we're standing on our left side, we're going to step through the bike and the leg to initiate a better running type of position. Reason why you don't want to do this. What happens if you don't come unclipped with your left leg? Now you're in this pretzel position, that bear is coming really quick, and you're gonna look like Joey's okay, right? Everybody's seen the video. If you haven't, take a quick look, right? We don't wanna be like Joey. That can be avoided in a situation where we don't do the step through. So I highly advise that we begin to get into the habit of swinging our right leg behind our left leg, so that when we go to disengage and we have a failure point, we can then disengage and sort of fall away from the bike. Don't step through. Number two. Don't disengage your left foot before you're off the bike. So a lot of folks will unclip both feet, then re-put their left foot back onto the pedal and then swing the right leg around. This is a big no-no, especially in wet conditions because if it gets to a point where things are really slippy and sloppy, your pedals are packed up with mud, your cleats are packed up with mud, you disengage your foot, you're gonna be stepping onto an ice rink there and there's a good likelihood that you're gonna slip off the pedal before you even get to the point where you want to get off the pedal. Keep that left foot clipped in with enough practice and the right muscle memory established, it won't ever be an issue. You come in, you disengage your right foot, swing that right leg around behind your left foot and then disengage your left coming into the barrier, coming into the force dismount, the run up, whatever it may be, play it safe, have it right. We wanna make sure to not pick the bike up from the saddle. This is kind of a big no-no because a lot of times we can slip, it's small, we don't wanna grab, we wanna get a nice firm grip on the frame and lift from here, all right? Now when we're lifting, we wanna make sure that we lift towards the back of the bike in this intersection of the top tube and the seat post and we wanna make sure to lift it with our seat on the outside of our right elbow, right? We don't wanna get into a scenario where we pick it up like this. This limits how high we can pick it up and generally, that's about the same height as a barrier is. So this distance from the front wheel to the tire is prime barrier smashing. Now, just by simply lifting it up on the outside, we can get it that much higher. So again, always pick it up towards the back of the bike and lift with the saddle to the outside of our elbow. Gives us good maneuverability and easy to control what we have going on in the, in the dismounting setup. 
Now there's a lot of voices out there that talk about cyclocross and what they do. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a nugget of knowledge. This is a, a topic that can go in very in depth on, uh, but these are just some brief do's and don'ts, things you should be looking at. Again, get out and practice. Spend the time starting slow, working up the pace, going from a walking to a trotting to a jogging to a running to a race pace, so that when the number goes on and the gun goes off, you're ready to go. You don't have to think about any of this thing and it just starts clicking. Might be able to help progress the, the, the discipline along for you. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Always subscribe. Let's get back to practicing. So that's gonna be over now for the day. We'll see you guys tomorrow with more tech, more cyclocross prep, all of the above. I can't wait, the season's coming quick. We got, uh, we got about two weeks to go. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, over and out. Peace, let's go practice.